very good evening to you from London. This is Arise News. I'm Samantha Johnson. Welcome to the Global Sport Report. So these are the stories and results making the headlines on the programme tonight. Tunisia fined $50,000 and threatened with expulsion after their quarterfinal protests, but the ref is banned for six months. Losing his shirt, Harry heads home after quitting QPR. Was it frustration at lack of funds? Can the elephants trump the Red Devils in the first Africa Cup of Nations semi-final? Also on the programme, really pleased to have signed. Honest? The footballer not exactly bursting with joy at his new club. Hello from the Global Sports Report. In the next half an hour, we will have all the results that matter from around the globe. And we'll be having expert analysis from the former international manager, Mike Adams, and the sports commentator, DJ Abbas. But before we hear from them, let's run through some of the key sporting news of the last 24 hours, starting with some breaking news. And you may remember in yesterday's programme, we told you about the investigation into the Africa Cup of Nations quarterfinal between Tunisia and Equatorial Guinea. Well, it ended with Tunisia's players surrounding the ref in protest at a penalty which took the game into extra time. The organisers CAF have now banned the referee for six months for poor performance and removed him from its elite panel. The Tunisian Football Federation has been fined $50,000 for the protest by its players and also ordered to pay for the repairs to damage to the stadium and to write a letter of apology for claiming bias. If they don't write the letter, they will be banned from the next Africa Cup of Nations tournament. Meanwhile, the Equatorial Guinea Football Federation has been fined $5,000 because of pitch invasions by its fans. Very interesting indeed. Right, in the English Premier League, and uh, Harry Redknapp has resigned as the QPR manager. Redknapp, who joined the club in November 2012, cited his, knee, uh, cited, cited his need for immediate knee surgery as the reason for his resignation. The 67-year-old has left the Loftus Road Club second bottom of the Premier League with 19 points from 22. Three games. Uh, the head of football operations, Les Ferdinand, and academy coach Chris Ramsey will take temporary charge. But the former Spurs boss, Tim Sherwood, is the frontrunner to take over. In the FA Cup fourth round replays featuring the English Premiership clubs, it finished Sunderland beating Fulham 3-1 at Craven Cottage. And at Old Trafford, Manchester United came out on top with a 3-0 victory over Cambridge. And moving to Germany to the Bundesliga where the top four were all in action tonight. It finished with Borussia Mönchengladbach beating Freiburg 1-0. Uh, in the rest of the fixtures, it was one all. Well, the big shock in German football this season has been the form of Borussia Dortmund. Last year, they were title challengers. Now, well, despite doing well in the Champions League, they're fighting to avoid relegation in the domestic competition. They face high-flying Augsburg in their next game, one they simply have to win after dropping to the bottom of the table with just 16 points from 18 games. I hope that the times are over when we have to concern ourselves with our place in the league table, with Augsburg being very much on the top and us being very much at the bottom. But we are still Dortmund, and I hope that we've said goodbye to that for the important tasks over the next couple of weeks. And that means it is an open match against a strong opponent. We have to be strong, and yes, that it is just soccer. Staying with football and Javier Aguero has been fired as the Japan coach because of his links to a match-fixing investigation. The Japan FA terminated his contract fearing any court case could harm the country's campaign to qualify for the next World Cup. Aguero has denied any wrongdoing after being named in a Spanish anti-corruption investigation. Oh, at this point, we have decided that we will cancel Aguirre's contract. First of all, we'd like to convey to coach Aguirre that the reason for the cancellation is that we want to avoid any influence to the national team on their preparation for the World Cup and we want to avoid those risks. There is a possibility that he will be indicted and then a court case could begin. 
We want to, as much as possible, avoid this sort of influence on the World Cup and the Asian Cup. Time now to look at the big games coming up in the Africa Cup of Nations. In a minute, we'll have expert analysis from my guests because it's the semi-final. And the matches see DR Congo take on the Ivory Coast. And then it's Ghana facing host Equatorial Guinea. Kathy Katai looks ahead to the games. It was African football at its best. The quarterfinals of the 2015 Cup of Nations was full of high-quality games, surprises and emotion. Ivory Coast's capital Abidjan was roaring with joy after the Elephants defeated Algeria in emphatic style 3-1. In what had been dubbed as an early final, quarter-finalists in last year's World Cup, Algeria had been tipped as tournament favourites. I think we've beaten the best team in the competition. We had to stay organised for the whole game to try to block them. And we had to be strong on set plays. Captain Yaya Toure and his teammates are now clear favourites as they go into the semi-finals against the Democratic Republic of Congo, who recovered from two goals down with just 25 minutes to go to beat Congo Brazzaville 4-2 in an epic nail-biter. Often when you're up 2-0, you tend to think the game is over. We used that a little bit to our advantage and we continued to push. Ghana's Black Stars had an easy 3-0 victory over Guinea to reach their fifth straight semi-final in the Cup of Nations. They now face home team and surprise semi-finalists, Equatorial Guinea. It's very difficult to play against the home team. Of course, they become as all the home supporters, it's in their country. But every game is a challenge. Our group was a challenge, today it was a challenge. It will be, again, a big challenge. And it's a semi-final. Equatorial Guinea qualified over Tunisia thanks to a highly controversial penalty awarded in injury time. Javier Balboa converted from the spot and then netted a free kick in extra time to take Equatorial Guinea through 2-1. The host nation's coast, Esteban Becker, said he understood the protest but refused to be drawn into the refereeing debate. Anyone would complain about a penalty given in the last minutes. I would have done the same. But after that penalty, we still had to score a goal. And it was a good thing that we had a specialist in Javier Balboa. The Confederation of African Football has so far refused to comment on the penalty. While Tunisia fumes over what might have been, the four remaining teams will now have their eyes firmly on the semi-finals to come. All right, so I'm joined by Mike Adams and DJ Bass to discuss some of the biggest sporting issues. And we have to start with the top story. Tunisia fined 50 thousand dollars but i suppose the biggest shock is the fact that the referee has actually been banned for six months now what do you make of that uh i think it's a ludicrous decision i mean at the end of the day it's a refereeing decision we've seen these types of decisions across football in many competitions without such a punishment yes it was an important game yes it was a decision that he got wrong mm -hmm. but Ultimately, to come out and, and make the type of statement, it just undermines referees, and I think it undermines the game of football. Well, referees do make mistakes, but my goodness, it's a very harsh penalty. They've put that under the umbrella of poor performance. I think we need to know specifically, as time goes on, what exactly was poor. Was it the penalty? Um, that's neither here nor there. I think it shouldn't have been given, but then, hey, that happens in, in, in football. Um, they said also that um, the way he didn't seem to impose himself on the players in the, during the course of the game, mm -hmm. that's neither here nor there. He could only do as much as he can. And then a six-month ban, a six-month ban and well, removed from the elite. How do you control those players? It's, it's very also, difficult it's, for one man so to, to control all of no, are they especially talking about, when they're very irate. Are they talking about the fracas after, or are they talking during about the because, mm. or are they talking about during the game? Because ultimately, over the ninety minutes, were his decisions that bad? No, I mean it was a game that that flowed. Uh, can Tunisia feel hard done by? Yes, they can, but it's football. Mm. Yeah. Well, moving on to the actual games that are going to happen uh, tomorrow, the semi-finals. I can't believe it's actually come around so quickly. Uh, let's have a look at DR Congo. They actually face uh, the Ivory Coast now. Who yes. do you think is going to come out on top on this one? Um, I'm a bit worried. 
Um, <laughs> Ivory Coast on paper, mm. with the exception of this year where you had Algeria's favorites, have been favorites for the last five years, Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. And they always tend to stumble just at about this stage. Just at about this stage. DR Congo, decent side really beat Nigeria in and out in the qualifiers. So they've gotten to this point by merit. Mm -hmm. And I think just at this point, we might see an Arsenal coming out in Ivory Coast where they tend to get the jitters. They just tend to... Why do they get the jitters? Able... I mean, you've got some big players in that side. They shouldn't well, get stage fight, well, so to speak. As you will probably agree with me as a professional coach, <laughs> the, the so-called advantage at times can become a disadvantage. Yeah. You know, they're saying as a bit high expectancy so high. We have the most expensive African footballer in Boney. We have one of the greatest yeah. African footballers alive in Yaya Toure. And the expectation is so high. And if the game kicks off and they are can we get the momentum, we might see them. It's, it's for me, it's 50 50. I mean, I normally agree with Baz, but I think this time, <laughs> this oh. time I'm, I'm going to go for Ivory Coast only for the reason that they've had a slow start mm -hmm. and they seem to have picked up the momentum in, mm -hmm. the, in, in these yeah, latter rounds. So, mm -hmm. so I think now that they've got that momentum, I think personally, they could it could it was touch and go for them to get you know, to exit this competition. I think now that they've kicked on, put in the type of semi um, final perform uh, sorry quarter final mm -hmm. performance that they did that they could you know they've got one eye on the trophy. I'm expecting them to go through, although you know as it's as Bas says, Any, anything they can you know they can go are um, undefeated. Mm. They haven't been beaten yet. Well, let's have a look at the other fixture as well. It's going to be uh, the Equatorial Guinea against Ghana. Now, me personally, I would like to see Ghana go through, but it would be an amazing story if Equatorial Guinea actually got to the final. The host nations hosts by just at the very last minute, and they're through. I think of all of the last um, five tournaments, I think this is perhaps the most finely poised one. Mm -hmm. Equatorial Guinea, you know, the, 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 that's the dream team. Mm -hmm. um, s save the dodgy <laughs> penalty. Really, <laughs> dodgy I think they, penalty. Yeah, they've had a good tournament, <laughs> yeah. all in all. You know, they're here mm -hmm. by merit. Um, Ghana is the only team that's lost a game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a little question mark there. Mm -hmm. um, playing at home, capacity stadium, they're going to be switched on all through. That's another 50 50 for me. I can't call it. Yeah, I mean, I think. That's I, very odd for you not to call something. No, it's, it's yeah, a tough yeah. one. <laughs> I, it's okay. you can, you I'm, gonna, I'm not going to sit on the fence on this one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for Ghana for all the reasons that Baz said before, because I think that the, uh, there'll be so much expectation because of the Ecuador again, mm -hmm. they're playing at home, that they could freeze, particularly if Ghana get on top of them early. Yeah. And I think that Ghana will, will play that way. That Ghana can play against Germany do that. Yeah, that was very emotional. And bang, I think David Luiz it, just expressed it, yeah, all it, of that. It all went. Right and I think that this, this could be sim uh, similar. But what I do think we can do is we can admire the fact that a nation who we wouldn't have recognised mm. at this level has come this far and has held their own. I think yeah. they've, done, they've had a fantastic competition. It's very true. Well, moving things to the Premier League. I don't like that. Look at that. Should no, no, no. We're, we're, we're on there. We're, we're communicating. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. Yeah. There's language game. OK, OK. <laughs> well, moving on to the English Premier League. And, of course, uh, Harry Redknapp uh, resigning as the QPR manager now. else and it's the fact that it happened a day after transfer deadline day it could be called Harry Redknapp day or Jim White day or whoever you want to um, whoever you believe but what do you make of that story Tony Fernandez's um, text the, the Twitter text before when he said we bought enough players in the summer uh, they're not mercenaries we've got a good enough squad I think that ultimately when your chairman comes out and says something like that, there's no expenditure in the transfer room, the manager is, is saying to himself, I can't have that. And mm. I think he's walked on the fact that um, he said all the right nice things, but ultimately what he's saying is you don't believe in me. And I think um, he's walked because of that. Okay, do you agree with that? I do believe I'm 100%. I think it was coming. Um, the last, I think, of all the premiership teams it appeared QPR was the most desperate in the last 48 hours. Mm. And they did try everything. Adebayo was coming, he wasn't coming, he was coming. And before then, he's had a very, very difficult season. 
high red map. They've not won a game away. I think they lost all games away, mm -hmm. and and he just appeared. And and the message, the text message, really, yeah. I think that was clear. And I think he just did the most honourable thing. Like I need to change my kneecaps. <laughs> the day after yeah. the transfer, he's got a great, he's got yeah. a great get out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, well, it'll be interesting to see who actually steps in his shoes. Or how when he comes back yeah, to the job could again. Be. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later on. Uh, but still to come on the programme, news of boxing, golf, and the battle for the FIFA presidency. And for all you sporting buffs out there, here's a little question for you just before the break. Uh, Egypt are the most successful country in the Africa Cup of Nations, but how many times have they won the tournament? Is it five, <coughs> six, or seven times? We'll let you know the answer in a little while. Trust Bank will be there now and into the future because you're at the heart of everything we do. Guarantee Trust Bank, proudly African, truly international. Thinking of banking in Africa? Then think Zenith, one of the biggest in Nigeria, with assets over $16 billion. Listed among the 20 most influential brands in the world and winner of Best Bank in Corporate Governance. The most customer-focused bank in Nigeria. A success built on three foundations dedicated to people, technology, service. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Welcome back to the Global Sports Reporter from Arise News. I'm Samantha Johnson, and in a minute, we'll be hearing from my guests, Mike Adams and DJ Abbas. But before the break, we asked you if you knew the answer to this question. Egypt are the most successful country in the Africa Cup of Nations, but how many times have they won the tournament? Is it five, six, or seven times? And the answer is C, seven times. They won the first tournament back in 1950. After them, Ghana and Cameroon have each won the competition four times. Right, let's take you through some of the sporting stories making the headlines around the world, starting with boxing. And as we predicted on yesterday's programme, Cole Froch has vacated his IBF super, weight, super middleweight belt as he recovers from an elbow injury which prevented him from fighting next month. But he says he plans to defend his WBA title in the summer. Fellow British boxer James DeGale will now fight for the IBF version of the championship. He's likely to face American Andre Dewell in the O2 Arena in London on April the 25th. Now, Rory McIlroy's court battle with his former agents was opened and adjourned in Ireland as the two sides tried to reach an agreement. The world number one ended his contract with them in 2013 and formed his own management company. But his original agents say that they are owed millions of pounds in commission. The case could last up to eight weeks and will resume tomorrow. 
NFL Hall of Famer Warren Sapp has been interviewed by police after being arrested in Phoenix for allegedly soliciting a prostitute. The 42-year-old was in Arizona to cover the 49th Super Bowl for the NFL Network. However, the network has since fired Sapp followed the news of the arrest. Two women are reported to have suffered minor injuries in the alleged incident. There's a culture of intimidation at FIFA. That's according to one of the candidates for the presidency of football's world governing body. Prince Ali of Jordan says the organization has to change. He's called for a public debate among the four candidates standing for the job. Obviously, uh, you know, there is a bit of a culture of intimidation. Uh, let me put it that way. Uh, um, within FIFA. Uh, but having said that, you know, this is a, a candidacy for the whole world. Um, I do know also that there are uh, confederations who have their own elections coming up in the next couple of months. Uh, but I do believe uh, that uh, hopefully we will get uh, uh, as many votes uh, as possible from the, uh, around the world. And uh, I'm looking at that. But again, this is a world uh, issue and not just one of confederations. Right, I'm joined again by the dynamic duo of Mike Adams and Abbas Tajani to talk about some of the biggest sporting issues. They really are like school kids. I have to separate them. You are very bad boys. <laughs> but uh, let's start with the news of Cole Foch uh, vacating uh, his IBF title. Guys, what are your thoughts on this? Wow. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Good thought. Wow. Um, no, no, it's, um, it's, that, it's that sport boxing again, isn't it, with uh, all, the, all its own rules. I mean, ultimately... Back in the day, you know, we come from a generation when people fought who was, you know, people put in front of, of them. There was no, there was no <clears throat> choosing your fights, paying out, going out for a purse. So that all feels wrong to me. It feels mm. like you're just cheating the public. You're, you're cheating the, the person who's earned the right to be in that position. But um, boxing is a game that they can do that. It's run by promoters mm. and, and the promoters are in charge. The, they seem to do the deals with the television people, and ultimately, that's 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 where it is. It's sad um, that that that's the call because you know the boy De Gale had earned his right mm. to to fight. We're now going to see a different fight, and I, I feel like the public's been cheated. Well, like you said, you're from the same kind of generation. Do you do you yes, agree um, with that? Yes, that's uh, that's um, in the '60s. There was only one major. There was one boxing body. Mm. Yeah. Now we have four. He's holding two belts. So if one federation plays difficult, he can dump one. He's still champion. And beyond that, really, he's the one everybody wants to fight. Um, I think we'll be coming to the Pacquiao Mayweather thing. You know, that's mm -hmm. a fight that should have happened years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Mayweather woke up and said, you know, he wanted his own set of rules. You know, can he get away with it? Of course, it's Mayweather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a sign of the times. Um, Froch is right. He's right at that point in his career where he needs. He's no longer. It's not the fraud that you that we know knew two years ago. Mm. It's a fine line. The girl could easily be a threat. But you know? he needs a payday. So it's everything strategic then. It's no, not. But he's not looking for a payday. He's at the yeah. end of his major, career, and know, he wants a payday. Well, there's nothing wrong major. with nothing. securing a payday. It's nothing. relatively a short, short career. Isn't nothing it? wrong <sighs> with that. But but what we're actually so there's nothing wrong with him wanting a payday. But what we're saying is that you're you're shortcutting the sport. Yes. That's, right that's the issue. The issue is mm. we're coming from the perspective of being sports that's people, it. investing in, in what sport's about. And you, could, you should be competing with the person who's earned the right. And it, that's it. It's so no, you, you disagree with him actually vacating the title? Oh, like that. completely. Yeah. Completely. Okay, well, why earn it? Why, why, why win it to disown it? Mm. Well, moving on to uh, the one and only uh, Mayweather uh, um, against Pacquiao. Is it going to happen? Who's ducking who here? Well, word, the word, the word, well, uh, Mayweather has, <laughs> trust me, Mayweather oh, has, you know, he's, right now he's 49 and 0, mm. and the O means everything to yeah. him. Oh, yeah. He wants, that's the legacy, you know, the great Rocky Marciano had 49 and 0, the great Larry Holmes approached the 49 fight, and funny enough, he lost to a Michael Spinks, mm -hmm. you know, and he lost that O. The O is all about the O. Mayweather, Mayweather has built himself. But if he doesn't fight him, is he going to, are people going to look at him to say, you know what? Well, the word is now the fight is going to happen. Okay. But then, and a few years ago, I would have put my money on Manny. But I think he's dropped a bit, and I think Mayweather's been consistent. Is it the right time for the fight? No. Will it still be exciting? Yes. 
because they both have yeah. the style. And yeah. Pacquiao could raise himself for the fight, and I could still have my Pacquiao win. Well, I have to stop you there, guys. I have to. Um, oh, I, have to, I could talk about this forever, but oh. guys, I'll talk to you guys later. Right, let's take a look at what's been getting oh, the world's sporting attention on social media <laughs> today. Oh, they are so bad. And time to have a look at a footballer who looked completely underwhelmed to, to joining his new club on deadline day. Uh, these are the official pictures of Aaron Lennon um, being signed on loan at Everton. Take a look at these shots here. He doesn't look that happy. He should be. He's at another club. He's at Everton, right? He should be happy about that. It's attitude. He's just giving it some attitude. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm thinking, I would like to think that's a bit of a joke. It can't be really serious. Also, check out, or oh, in terms of a social media, check out um, hashtag doing a red nap. That's it from me. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time, but keep it here on Arise. Thinking of banking in Africa? Then think Zenith, one of the biggest in Nigeria, with assets over $16 billion, listed among the 20 most influential brands in the world and winner of Best Bank in Corporate Governance the most customer-focused bank in Nigeria. A success built on three foundations, dedicated to people, technology, service. Zenith Bank, in your best interest.